morning, video games. Welcome to Filthy Casuals, a podcast about video games hosted by three very kind and extremely knowledgeable boys. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tommy Dasilo, and with me as always... It's Ben Vanell here, Tommy. It's great to be here. There's a little fly buzzing around my microphone. <laughs> yeah, you stink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Get a load of pig pen over here. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> out with it. Get them all out. Have a go. Uh, joining us on the couch, on the new couch. The fly was... Uh, uh, yeah, you've got a new couch. Mm-hmm. My name's Adam Knox and the fly was only buzzing around the microphone because you smell too bad even for a fly. Okay. They've been going for my eyes lately. Really? Flies. They're always trying to get in my eyes. Is that why you're wearing those snow goggles now? <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm... <laughs> Does that explain the new look? ...completely head to toe in a hazmat suit. <laughs> Does that not happen normally? I was trying to figure this out earlier. What? They, whenever there's flies around, they'll, like, get in my fucking eyes. Um, do, do my eyes only, stink? Do you just notice it more when they go <laughs> near your eyes? I guess surely so. they're buzzing around. But it seems to happen head. all the time, and they try it again and again and again. Hmm... It seems to be specifically, it might be like the saltiness of tears. Sure, the fluid, <laughs> yeah. There'll be one listener who knows exactly the answer for this. Please and let me know. And they're just going insane right now. Sitting there typing with four of their six legs going, your, fly, your eyes are... Ah, di- oh, I figured it out. What? Eyes. Fl- eyes. They think they're flies. Oh. oh. They're trying to mate with your eyeball. It's a misunderstanding <laughs> they're having with the English yeah, language. Yeah, it's, right. it's a wordplay issue. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Adam, it's a very windy day today in Melbourne. It's fucked. Mm. I just met you in the street outside Ben's house. Yeah. And we were commenting on how windy it was, and you said that you were wearing glasses purely to protect yourself from the wind well, nah, and the it's debris. Because, it's because of the hay fever. <laughs> and uh, my right. eyes get yeah. all scratchy, and then I can't like do anything about it when there's contact lenses in there. I just yeah, thought of it right. because, Ben, your snow goggles thing wasn't completely inaccurate. Yeah. Because he sort of no. is using his glasses as a, as a form of protection. They're Safety, not deb- yeah. debris-proof, but I've been getting fucking terrible hay fever. And so instead of taking the actual solution, which is to buy medication and remember <laughs> to use it, I've got medication at home. Keep forgetting. Because when you're at home, the elements can't get to That's you. That's it. And yeah. you've got to like, take it a couple of days in a row for it to build up th- properly yeah. the, the, the legit shit. I'm terrible at it. I'm yeah. pr- going to be one of the reasons that the superbug happens because I keep forgetting to finish courses of antibiotics. <laughs> What's going on? Like In the last year, I feel like I know at least five people who've just like developed really bad hay fever yeah, in I'm like the last 12 months. What's yeah. going on? I've heard... And I think this is probably from someone who uh, I have no reason to trust. I don't remember who it was. <laughs> but it's almost, you don't remember who it was almost, and you don't trust them. Well, please feel free, to, <laughs> feel free to waste our time with this one. <laughs> almost certainly some random person. But <laughs> this sounded right. Okay. Diesel. It's the increase of diesel well, in the atmosphere. That sounds like a chemtrails and like Petrol and stuff. Uh, it does something to your nasal passages. Okay. Degrades them to the point or something. Oh, where, where they're more pollen. sensitive or something. Yeah. yeah. I um, wished when you said... I wish when you'd said Diesel that the actual reason had been the musician. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's got something to do with it. I swear to God, he's going around infecting people with hay fever. He's the man at the top of the pyramid. The yeah. little the little thing on the wall where everything's connected to diesel. Uh, um, diesel Adam, exhaust particles and allergenicity of pollen grains of blah blah blah. blah. And this is from <laughs> www.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. Wow. So if you're telling oh. me that isn't some serious fucking organization, the national uh, court. Um, <laughs> no, I'm already stumped. <laughs> <laughs> it's got dot gov in NIH yeah. is National Institute for Health. Right. Okay. Uh, NLM will be National Losers Market, yep. which is where you shop, Tommy. Oh my god. And wow. NCBI stands for <laughs> Never <CBI>. Consume <laughs> Bix, comma Isogi Wheat. <laughs> okay. The North, oh. South, East, West one. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know what it but anyway, it's yeah. They are okay, major grass pollen allergen binds to diesel exhaust particles. Maybe it makes the pollen stronger. Right. Right. Anyway, they're linked in some way. I feel very fortunate, and I don't want to jinx it, but I've never had a I've never had a problem with like hay fever or pollen or anything like that. It's fucking. I awful. feel like mm. maybe my days are numbered, or am I in the clear? I don't know. I'm 33. Am well, I? Well, I was like 30, and then it hit. Really and it hit really hard. I was Damn. like 26, yeah. Yeah. and it it you get all the symptoms of like a terrible, terrible cold. Mm. Where if you were that sick, people would go like fucking go home. Yeah, from right. Work. 
But if it's just hay fever, people are like, stop sniffing. Yes. Yeah, get yeah. over it. Yeah. Stop whinging. Because like, I sometimes I get a fever, like I'll get, like literal fever. I'll get a headache. Mm. Like I can't open my eyes. And you're Oof. right. It's like, that's a f- the, the flu. Yeah. But people are like, gosh, what are you... Sc- just have a little sneeze over there, mate. <laughs> a little sneeze. <laughs> Sneezing it up, are you? We need to rise up. <laughs> yes. Hey, Fever Gamers, rise up. <laughs> um, just very quickly, Adam, we will get into video games chat soon. But just very quickly, since you're the one sitting on it, mm. I would love it if you could give us a quick review of Ben's new couch. Yeah. Adam's couch corner. It's a couch. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, relative, it's midway between being soft and firm. Mm-hmm. I'd say more on the soft side. It's a little plush. Really? You think I, it's a little soft? I like a firm couch, though. Yeah. I like a firm bed. Yes. I like a firm penis. <laughs> I like everything that I'm ever going to sit on. Well, I like them all about semi. <laughs> <laughs> Once you hit a certain age, that's about all you can expect. That's it. The hay fever comes on strong and everything else stops. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice, though. It's it looks great. better than your old couch, i got to say. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's a, yeah. It's the exact color of my phone. Which uh, <laughs> would really annoy me if I lived here because I would definitely leave that phone on this couch and go, "Where's my phone?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I got the white phone case. Just nice. Are you serious? No. <laughs> oh wow. That's something I can see you doing though. <laughs> yes. Color coordinating your phone case to your couch yep. would be yep. an extreme BV move. Maybe I color coordinated the couch to my phone, if you know what I mean. Okay. Because I already I do- had the phone. I do know what you yeah, mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do we got in the way of news this week, boys? There are a few oh. big releases to talk about. Yeah, we, we finished with Couch Corner. We finished with, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, out of out of five, what would you give it, Adam? Ah, uh, look. Probably Maybe a, a better question is this: Would you be happy with this couch in your own home? Two things. It's too short for Adam. Exactly. Okay. I wouldn't be able to lie down on this couch. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's about my only issue with it. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. Because so me sort of sitting, you know, a bit up against the cushions, legs out. Gets right to the end. It's perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. and you've got a little pillow in the corner of it too. You've been, someone's been kicking back facing the TV. Hey, I'm on leave. Yep. I've been on holidays. I've been falling asleep on the couch a lot. <laughs> it's been fantastic. <laughs> I'm loving it. I can't wait to be that, to be like a dad who will immediately fall asleep upon getting home. Oh, yes. oh yeah. That's my dream is to sit in my chair, <laughs> head back, mouth open. Yeah. One of my shithead kids drop something in my mouth and I have to yell at them. <laughs> but I've got the fucking the spaghetti in my mouth that they just dropped in there. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, they only dropped food in there. Yeah. yeah. They're not monsters. They're not dropping a fucking Hot Wheels in there. Mm-hmm. But they dropped a whole bunch of spaghetti in there, which is still a choking hazard. Yeah. And I wake up and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm trying to yell at them, but spaghetti's <laughs> falling out of my mouth, which makes it way funnier for them. Mm-hmm. My dad, my, my dad my can do a, a smooth... <laughs> Smooth fall asleep at quarter to eight if he's just at home watching TV. And it, yep. it's kind of like, yeah, I'm curious about when that starts to creep in. Because it doesn't matter how little sleep I've had or how tired I am. Mm. I have a tough time getting down before like midnight. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. I can I can have had five hours sleep and still just be like wired at 1130 at night. I reckon when you have kids, the amount that fucks up your sleeping habits fucks you up for the rest of your life. Interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. the impression that I get. Yeah. Because I had da, fucked da, up da, sleeping. Da, da, da. What is that? The impression, the impression that, that I, I get. get. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been very strange not knowing what was going on there. I just hummed a little tune for literally no reason. I thought you were trying to like train me, you know, the, the like Pavlov training. <laughs> so if I say the word impression, suddenly my eyes start salivating. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, best fall asleep as a dad, Christmas Day, 11 a.m. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Presents open, mm-hmm. little nap before lunch, yeah. yep. wake up just to polish off the lunch, straight back out again. I want to make that noise that goes... <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the ASMR, everybody. It, it's because... A it's sexy mouth reading. It's the most content <laughs> anyone can seem, right? It's just... They're content, so Content, but also like, I, at least with the dads of the generation that are our dads, mm. there's something in the face that at least my dad and the dads I've seen have been... <laughs> and I haven't seen every dad. Sure. No. I've never made that claim. How many dads do you reckon you've seen? Oh, boy. At the time, were they dads or dads to be? I feel total? like this is more one for the Patreon episode. <laughs> if it's trying to work out how many dads... Adam has that's seen. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm gonna say I've seen about a ha- uh, seen about t- four hundred and twenty thousand people. Right. Uh, seen. Yeah. yeah over yeah, my yeah. life. Sighted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, out of them, about half would be male. Sure. So what's that? One, uh, two, ten. Yep. Uh, and out of that, oh, a bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Maybe a quarter of dads? A more, third? more than a quarter. I'd okay. say a third, probably. I'm going to go two thirds. Two I reckon thirds? 66% dads. Wow. Jeez. It, am I talking. Wait, no. At the time. Oh, at the time. Yeah. Oh, then about a third. Yeah, I think. Yeah. 33% of 210. Figure out that number and you got yourself 60, the answer. 60, 70, Could be. 70,000? Nah, probably. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> There's no way of figuring that <laughs> 70, out. 70,000 dads. Yeah. That's a good number. And out of those dads. Yes. Yep. I forget my point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. true. It was going to be about whether you thought you liked the falling asleep in the chair idea because it was a sign of being content and relaxed. Oh, and happy. that's right. Dads of that generation. Yes. Even if they look content, they're trying to mask it with fake fake anger, which was oh, the sign right. of masculinity back okay. in their day. Right. So yes. every dad I've seen, even when they look like they're sleeping peacefully, <laughs> furrowed brown. Fr- yeah, yeah, they're frowning. Yeah. Yep. I anyway, took, I took my dad to a jazz concert recently, and he fell asleep during that. And the band had two drummers. That's yes. not an age thing. Going <laughs> wild, and I, like I was sitting there going, "This is one of the loudest rooms I've ever been." And we were right near the speaker too. I was like, the, "My worry was he would find be finding it uncomfortably loud." Yeah, yeah. And then I look over, and he's just on the nod. I'm like, wow. "Yeah, okay, no, no issue here." What? Because you th- were going to say, "Knox, that jazz is boring." Yeah, but it, if it was very loud. Sounds like it's kind it of was. Funky um, jazz. Do you know Kamasi Washington? Yes, I do. It was him. So it's oh. like a lot of like kind of jammy, like yeah. not like kind of younger. It's style embarrassing jazz. that he accidentally booked two drummers for the same night. <laughs> for one drummer, he's always wearing a mustache around them, going like, "All right, now uh, follow my lead here." For the other one, he's like, "Okay, now this is actually blues in G. You gotta go with me." <laughs> Any band with the two drummers is so it's so mm-hmm. unnecessary. Mm-hmm. But God, it's sick. Was it? And they know us by the Trail of Dead. Was the first. Sort of big indie band that had two drums. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, completely unnecessary, there's an Age of Empires 4 being made. That's in mm-hmm. the news. Mm-hmm. It's It looks like... Um, okay, I, I liked the Age of Empires games back in the day. One and two. Yeah. And never really played three. Four looks like a 3D version of two. Okay. It's back to medieval. The first one was like ancient times. The mm. second one was like medieval. Third one was New World America, North America. And then the fourth one, I remember there being a magazine ad years ago that like had those three. And then the fourth was like World War Two, and the fifth was like space. Oh, right. And they yeah. were like, this is the Age of Empires plan. But nope, four is uh, medieval again, 3D looking. What what was, because I never played these or yeah. maybe I played two a bit at a friend's house. Was Age of Mythology, were they expansions? Age of was Mythology that... was like a spinoff that came along later right. with like Greek Zeus shit. Yeah, yeah. Griffins. Um <laughs> And yeah, the the Age of Empires main series thing is like kind of a mix between like a command and conquer and a civilization type of thing. Yeah, you yeah. were upgrading the era that you were in, so you go from this age to that age to that age, mm-hmm. um, which would give you new units and stuff. And yeah, pretty standard sort of real time strategy game, but they were they were good ones. Uh, and this might. Good as well, but mm-hmm. it's certainly not that exciting to me because it does seem like, especially when there there was a like remastered edition of two that just came yeah, out, yeah, right? yeah, and then this looks like a three D version of that, right? Kind of. So that was one of the XO nineteen announcements, yes, of which there were a fair few, mm. uh, and I'll get them up at some point. All right. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I'm oh, a little concerned. You're I'm always really so worried. Fucking stressed. I'm the calm one all the time. He's the I'm, dad of the group. <laughs> I never flip up about anything. <laughs> he never flips up about anything. I uh, flip out, I said. I said flip O-U-P. <laughs> if you're going to quote me derisively, do it correctly. <laughs> I only bring up Age of Empires 4 first because it was like a segue, sort of. Yes. The main, the big news, in my opinion, this week, mm-hmm. they announced a new Half-Life game. Yes, they did. That's fucking wild. I think by the time this is out, it might be... There might be more stuff about it. Right. 10 a.m. Pacific time Thursday is when it's happening. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, probably right around the time this goes up. Yeah. Roughly, yeah. But certainly before it's being recorded. Uh, so, yeah, let's speculate wildly about something that everybody knows about. I So, people are fury or people are a bit angry about this, right? Because everyone has wanted a Half-Life Episode 3 or 3 for yeah. years. And this is a VR game. Well, but we don't know the scope of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It could be a big VR game. It points to it maybe being like a prequel to two. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So one. I guess that would technically. (laughs) Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, it could be one and a half. Yeah, it'd be more like a one point like eight because there were like two expansions to one as well. But whatever. I love it. Is. it. I'm going to take this on board. Just saying, <laughs> people. Yeah, just uh, just watched the prequel to the Godfather Part Two last <laughs> night. <laughs> 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 oh yes This is a real game changer for me You really see what happened to Robert De Niro's character <laughs> It's <Just> all topsy-turvy <laughs> Any way that I can waste people's time in conversation I'm all down for Just confusing and annoying Oh yes Yeah, my uh, prequel <laughs> name is Tommy uh, Regular name, Dasselon <laughs> <laughs> My secret name yep. is the other one Exactly Um it, yeah, it's a VR game. It's uh, it is called Half Life Alex. Mm. It there was the rumor that they were Valve was making like three, I think, VR games, and they were like full size things. Right. So this will probably be a proper game. Right. I doubt this will be. It could be, but I doubt it will be like a two hour bullshit thing. Is Oculus Valve's thing? No, What's they Valve? they have they do have their own. I, I think it's called. Oh, it's not Steam VR. It's they do have their own one. It's called something. It's like Index, I think, is what it's oh, called. Oh right, yeah. Uh, and it's fucking expensive, but you can use this with like any of the VR. Yeah, sure. Like. Right, right. But yeah. So yeah, not much to say about it just yet. We're currently recording at uh, seven thirty-eight p.m. Wednesday Pacific time. Right. So there's oh, right. a fair few hours to go, but I'm really interested to see what it is because, <laughs> like. Even if it's not like technically Half Life Three, even Half Life Three wouldn't be the thing that was meant to happen, which was like Half Life Two Episode Three. So right, they which is that thing already. that they released the the plot of, yeah, like a year ago. The Remember guy we went through that. Was it Laidlaw? Someone? Yeah, um, one of the the writers just kind of released the whole. Yeah, yeah, and like changed the names a bit. Yeah, that's right. But um, it, it's cool. It points to them, you know. The fact that they're not completely done with it mm. is a good thing. Absolutely, yeah. And so, games in general. I think the consternation that I saw, and it's not what, how I feel. I think I'm just interested in it. People are like, "Oh, you, you, all you do is release like you know cosmetic packs for Team Fortress and all that kind of stuff. And why, why didn't you actually put more resources into making this a single player, not VR game and stuff like that?" I it's mean. Like, yeah, that is a very funny thing to be saying to them when they are literally doing something that's not the the packs for Team Fortress. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the hats yeah. and shit. Yeah, uh, it's a it's good also thing. I, it, that weird thing of like, well, you don't get to decide what any company does, right? No. You know, like they they've made this. It might be good. It might be bad. But don't be like, why didn't you do something else entirely? Because their their reason is their own reason that's people's biggest complaint with everything is like mm. why isn't this exactly the thing that i specifically want yes. you to do yeah. to be fair it is also the thing that they specifically said they were going to do which they didn't and then didn't yeah. communicate to anyone about why <laughs> right so it's fair enough i think on some level to be like hey you set this thing up you were making this and you said this was coming out then you didn't do it and you never said anything about it right they have ignored it for more than a decade yeah which is strange um, and like, yeah, it's cool to be getting something, but I do kind of understand why a lot of people have written Half-Life off as a whole thing. Mm. And then when it does show up again, it's almost like seeing the deadbeat dad who you kind of, right. you'd already come to terms with the fact that you weren't going to see him and that he was out of your life. And then mm. he shows up again being like, Hey, what's up? Yeah. Can I crash on your couch? And you're like, fuck off dad. Yeah. <laughs> fuck off dad. Throw some spaghetti at his mouth and tell him to piss off. You're just going to fucking fall asleep on me again, dad. <laughs> can I crash on your couch? Oh, what? So you can fall asleep <laughs> on it? No, thank you. Like you've been asleep on Half Life for the past decade. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a crazy <clears throat> thing that Valve has become, mm. and that Half Life has not gotten spoken about for so long by mm. them. It's so weird. A lot of the speculation is like, well, when they do Half Life Three, they want it to be like a big thing that that pushes stuff forward, and they're afraid to do it and all this stuff. I don't right. think that's true. I think they have a strange management style there, where it's all like this weird flat management, and everyone can do what they want, and right? Work and stuff what they want. I don't think it works, and they've got no reason to do it. They've got this other business now. Kind that's of. Th that's what I was gonna say. It's like they have an incredibly profitable business. Yeah. What? Why would they risk it? The like difference in what Steam was in two thousand seven to now is enormous, mm. and. I think if they could, like, they've got this VR thing, this index thing, mm. that 
they have an interest in getting out there and what better way than to have a flagship title that is this big deal name. Yes. Is it still a big deal name though? I don't know. Because it was 12 a, years ago. It's not big enough to make me buy a $3,000 VR rig or whatever it fuck is. Fuck no. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, it, and I think there's like a whole generation of people who missed the boat with Half-Life. Totally. And yeah, I don't know. It's um, It might be too little too late for the idea of a Half-Life game as a whole, but I'm excited to see what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else from XO19? Did any of you watch anything from that? No. Nah. No. Cool. Well, let's not bother them. <laughs> we'll just be <laughs> describing things. From None of it was very interesting. Like Rare announced a new game. Oh, yeah, oh. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, look who's come crawling <laughs> back. Well, I forgot, okay? Yeah. I can't believe we fooled him, Ben. Yeah. We really <laughs> managed to convince him that we hadn't watched it when... <laughs> the truth what? is, we watched the entire. What's it thing. called? Everglades or something? Uh, Ever, Ever Wild. Ever Wild yeah. sounds right. It's like it's going to be like EverQuest. Sure, it looks like an MMORPG. The guy who created EverQuest died this week as well, which Shit. is his name. Sorry, good on you for bringing that up, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's my fault. <laughs> Me and Adam are trying to have fun over here. <laughs> uh, um, what did we get? Yeah, it looks. Uh, a lot of people have commented on the comparison to Breath of the Wild. Right, kind of looks like it's a similar sort of vibe. I have to say though, like whatever the the current team of Rare, mm. I do not like their art style. Their Sea of Thieves, this yeah, sort the of character stuff. designs look pretty yucky to me. Yeah, I, I like the way that this one looked. It's like um, I understand what you mean. It's the same sort of art style as like those Dota kind of things. It looks a little. It's like it's a, a little yeah. just very generic and like sure. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it was crapped out by a. <laughs> By a program in, you know. Oh, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, take that. Using the C word. <laughs> <laughs> wow, hey. I would I'm going to bring back That's crap. <laughs> I don't I'll use th- crap enough in a, on a day to day basis. Yeah. This is my favorite word when I was like, what would I have been? 11 and loved The Simpsons. Yeah. Well, saying you sandwiched the word crap in between holy and Lois. <laughs> you got yourself a funny goddamn character right there. Well, it kind of felt like when you were a kid, it was like the swear word that you could kind of get away with using. Yeah. You would yeah. never get really get pulled up on it. If you went for shit, mm. you were probably going to get pulled up on that. But crap, you were a pretty good chance of being able to sneak by the keeper. Yep. Um <laughs> That's how much I was enjoying that little exchange. Where it came came out of a yawn with it. Um, yeah, ever wild. I like the animation and stuff. It's not clear what it is. Yep. But the trailer made it look like another sort of multiplayer thing to me because there mm-hmm. was like little groups of people walking around this world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, they said some more stuff about Project X Cloud, which is their streaming service thing. Yeah. Some some of our our peeps have got on the beta. I believe sure. it's already gone out. Um. It's yeah, it's like uh, Stadia, which launched this week, mm-hmm. kind of. Um, none of us are the least bit interested in going in on it, and I don't think even have access to it in Australia right now. No, we don't. Yeah. No. So you're not going to get first hand stuff from us, but second hand, it sounds bad. Yeah, it sounds like a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, I got language what? No, I said cap <laughs> I said data caps Which oh, they seem to yeah. be ignoring <laughs> We got an email from someone about it Who's been playing it yeah. And yeah. Uh, he said This is from Jonathan Google <laughs> So it's glowing Yeah uh, What's he saying Once it, once every few minutes the stream pauses Then continues It lasts for a fraction of a second But it's annoying I don't know if it's my laptop or internet connection or router, but it does happen. Uh, the game selection isn't great. Uh, I'm not going to pay $10 per month for it. It's too expensive for what I'm getting. Yeah, right. So it sounds like it's, yeah. From all, all the reviews that I've seen of it, it sounds like it doesn't work well. Mm-hmm. Games aren't very playable. Mm. Yeah. So what the fuck's the point? I've s- I think all I've seen is like a GIF of someone showing the lag time of like hitting the button right. and something moving a, a full second after they yeah. press it. It's not going to happen. Like <laughs> It's I, not happening. If this is Google's infrastructure, yeah. and it'll probably get better. It's, you know... It, <laughs> it's such a bitchy tech report. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? It's tech bitch here. <laughs> Those sluts at Google have fucked up again. <laughs> <laughs> but it just sounds uh, like there's no point to it. Like Unless everyone's internet is... Perfect, 
with zero lag and zero latency. Which it, it does, it, even if you've got great internet there, yeah. it still sounds That's like it. it's lagging on their yeah. end. It's yeah. hard to imagine anyone getting this as their primary source mm -hmm. of playing games. That's mm. the thing. It's like you're going to get it out of curiosity, like maybe you already own like a Switch or an Xbox or whatever it is. Yeah. But there's no one who's like, you know what? I've always wanted to play video games. <laughs> and now that my favourite company, Google, have gotten <laughs> yes. in on the act, I'm exclusively brand loyal to them. Yeah. Finally, I can dive in. Yeah. I used to enjoy video games when I was a child. But as I grew up, I got more into data collection. <laughs> <laughs> now that I can combine the two, uh, yeah, it's... You it's should be able to, on Stadia, you should be able to play all the um, weird little games that Google have put into their logo over the years. <laughs> you know, every now and then they've had like a little ice hockey yes, game or whatever like it Pac is. Pac-Man's birthday or, yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Pac-Man's birthday. Yeah. 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 That would be cool. The Google Home, the Google Homepage collection, exclusively on Stadia. Ugh. That would be great if that's their one exclusive. <laughs> that's their big get. It's face and password match the game. <laughs> <laughs> Take a photo of your face and type in all of your passwords, and we'll give you I don't know seventy points. Mm -hmm. uh, fuck that company in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, and fuck that service. It doesn't sound great. So yeah, uh, it it does have to. It has to be your only thing for it to make financial sense for you mm. like you, it really doesn't make sense to own another console and if yeah. it just doesn't if it's unreliable it's a service that is not worth paying for yeah yeah uh maybe they could fix it hypothetically but if people aren't getting on board with it in the first x amount of time whatever it is they give it a year yeah. or two i can't see this lasting very long yeah yeah i don't really get the appeal personally of streaming games the, the play from anywhere thing is a cool edge case for it. Yeah. But how often really are enough people in a hotel with good enough Wi-Fi to want that? Or how often are you on a plane? Like it really, it's not that big of a deal. I think the selling point is that you don't have to have a good PC, right? I guess. Yeah. And you don't have to keep changing consoles every generation. So it's relying on someone wanting it for 10 years. And for that to pay off, to be like, oh, I didn't have to own a PC. I didn't have to shell out three grand or I didn't have to get a PS4 and a PS5. Or being so lightly invested in games that they haven't gone in on anything, but they're like, oh, I'd play Assassin's Creed, I guess. Mm. But what fucking person is out there who just wants to play one Assassin's Creed game yeah. and hasn't bought a play? You know what I mean? Yeah. That, uh, and the, the idea of that being able to play anywhere. I mean, we talked about this when it got announced. Yeah. Like, I love the concept of the Switch. You know, it's been great with travel and everything. I, I really get into that side of it. But this isn't that. Mm, you can't yeah. play it on a plane. And like you said, you don't know where you're going to be staying. You don't know what the internet's going to be like. Mm. So you may well get there. It's like, cool, I get to pick this up from where I left off at home. Oh, I can't play it because this if, internet in the hotel is If people are in shit. Yeah. invested in games enough to pay $60, whatever, US for a game, mm -hmm. so say it's Assassin's Creed because that's just one of the ones that's on there, mm -hmm. they more than likely have already either bought a PS4 or are going to want to play the game at their house or something. Right. I don't think that yeah. idea of yeah. the traveling fucking hotel mm. vagrant gamer, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I don't <laughs> yes. think it exists. Yeah, and using if it their, does, all their travel sim data on one right. fucking session. <laughs> and if the person who is doing that wants to play a game and they're, again, not investing in games enough that they, they don't own a console, mm -hmm. then you're competing with phones. Yes, Everyone's so already fucking the got a phone. Apple Arcade, as exactly. at the very least, yeah. And, and I just don't think having a fucking, you know, Tomb Raider fucking one, the mm. prequel to Rise of the Tomb Raider. <laughs> yes. I don't think there's any case to be made for that. I don't get it. Yeah. That is funny, the idea of like, if this took off, th this way of, you know... Consuming games really took off. Just the idea of like Airbnb Wi Fi is just getting absolutely slammed yeah. by people taking down some gigantic Tomb Raider set. Like, mm. just that pocket, you're in Japan, just like the pocket Wi Fi just getting Ooh. an absolute smashing. Fuck. Like, the person who's like renting the place out, getting their internet bill, like, fucking hell, what <laughs> happened here? I got to shut down. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. I had a person in there for two days and they bankrupted me. Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason that hypothetically one day the internet wouldn't be good enough to be able to play Assassin's Creed again on mm. uh, an internet connection, but 
in the next generation of consoles, even it looks like they're moving further towards SSDs being just the normal thing. Yes. Yep. High data moving fast. That's it. Yeah. They're, so the internet infrastructure will never be able to keep up with what a modern game is. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like, but I guess you're just moving video and inputs over the internet stream, so it doesn't really matter. It's not like you're literally streaming the 30 gig of. That's true. I, so I guess that doesn't fucking matter. But then it's, it's it's closer to streaming like 4K video or some, something like that. It is. But then with inputs happening really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, I guess they could do, but they just haven't yet. Yeah. And it's bad to come out of the gate looking like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have pro- you know I have problems with Netflix in my house every now and then. Yeah. Streaming video on that that's not even 4K. Yeah. yeah. Well, the ultimate way to stream a game is to play it on a console. Yeah, stream it from the disc. Or the install, <laughs> yep. Through the console, through the CPU. Into your eyes. Yeah, into, I stream through, it directly to your TV, into my brain. I go to the TV first. I'm old fashioned. Right. No, I I'm, haven't hit like directly jacked in yet. I'm high tech. I cram my head inside the disc drive of, of the PS4. <laughs> oh, wow. and I, I just look around at what's going on in there. All and the I transistors and shit. Yeah, yeah. it <laughs> looks like the Matrix in there. Yeah, <laughs> like Flat Stanley. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. So <laughs> just jam my head and like, up oh, there he is. There's Nathan. <laughs> oh, he's fallen. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's well, like if the far side was still being done, that would be. Yes. You know, there's that one of like opening the car radio and it's like a tiny little band in there playing. Oh, Gary yeah. Larson would be having a crack at Ooh, gaming, yeah. I reckon. He He's back. He's coming back. Is he? He's bringing the far side back. He's back oh, in right. a big I knew way. he launched a website, but I thought that was just like a catalog of all the old ones. Dude, if you want to see what those fucking chickens do now that they've got smartphones, <laughs> oh, God. you're in luck. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be anything on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, it is still possible to play. I was going to talk about a different game, but let's talk about this one. Play um, you know your fucking travel games. You've been doing that, you two. Travel games, moving around, holding a fucking holding your playstations in front oh, of your faces. Yeah, a Nintendo playstation. Yeah, yeah. You've been holding. Your fucking, <laughs> I think Dad's around. about to fall asleep over there. <laughs> I think he already has. <laughs> walking around holding your playstations. <laughs> Do you want us to talk about Pokemon? Oh, you can do what you Sword want. and or Shield. <laughs> I'm gonna rest over here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, you have been talking a lot. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, like I'm no, saying, it's good. You deserve, yeah, you <laughs> you held up your, the whole podcast. Um, for, I'm gonna go for about shops. forty minutes. Go down to the shops. You going down the shops? Yeah, I'll be back, kids. Don't worry. All right. Oh, he's coming to get back. A, a pack of cigarettes or something? Yeah. Do you say? No, I'm gonna get new kids. I mean, <laughs> oh, uh, shit. I mean, I'm already in slip there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield is out. Which one did you get? I got Shield. I got Sword. Oh, oh, now this is classic. The original odd couple. This is classic radio. <laughs> when uh, when I can be <laughs> find any time to play it, yes. I'm a Shield boy too. So really, we're, we're coming for you. Mm-hmm. I liked the the unique Pokemon's on the sword better. It's like f- far fetched and ones like that. Right. It's oh like really? A Fox one or something. Oh, yeah. Damn, yeah. I didn't even look into that. There's a couple. It's not just the legendary. There was a couple. Ah, oh, damn. It's like six maybe. On a, yeah. That British far fetched, yes. Oh man, like so far fetched. God damn. Yeah, I regret not getting that that one now. Oh well, you can take it back. Um, just co- as a quick side note, I think the box art for this game is truly hideous. I haven't really looked. It's at just it. dull. <laughs> it's just like a very plain. It looks like fan art. It's probably. It's it looks like a, a mock testament up. to how dull it is that I didn't even notice what yeah. it was. Same as most Pokemon games, they just have the. The legendary Pokemon from it on the cover, just going like, Bleh. yeah, yeah. But pose. there's often still there's like a bit of a background. There's like a bit of d- anyway, whatever. Color, yeah. yeah. Um, Red, blue, something like that. Mm-hmm. Gold. <laughs> what? Okay. Like a ruby so we haven't color. really uh, Pikachu yellow. <laughs> 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 what really are the, these are blue, blue and pink, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, so in the weeks leading up to this, there was yeah we talked a little bit about the national poker decks not being included, mm-hmm. and then there was a whole thing where people were uh, people were like review bombing Game Freak when Little Town Hero came out. Yes, and they've been getting a lot of hate, and then there was a whole thing on Twitter of like people doing thank you Game Freak, just trying to restore the balance, mm-hmm. get a bit more positivity in there because yeah this has had. I think it's fair to say a pretty disastrous r- rollout, at least from a PR sense. Absolutely, I things, was going to say things yeah. leaking and yeah. people just not like people just not being happy at any turn yeah. of what they've announced with this. It's Certainly a rocky launch, not yes. smooth. Like not necessarily all bad, just like not the way they would have planned it. Like a well, rocky five. <laughs> yeah, launch. yeah, yeah, I get it. 
Which I would say that now that it's out, none of that stuff really matters. Yeah, that's, like as soon as uh, the ugh. the reviews started coming out and they were all good, it was like, oh, okay, I guess. Well, the people I that care the good. most about it, you know, that get on Reddit or whatever it is and go, we're all gonna fucking boycott this mm. and fuck you, game freak and whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is like the franchise is big enough that it really doesn't matter if you know some people on a message board decide that they're gonna boycott it. Yeah, this thing's gonna be a huge seller. Yes, regardless. A, a lot of our fans, like a lot of our listeners, were saying in our group, like I think the boys are going a bit hard on Pokemon here. I either like it and I'm going to get it and it'll be fun or I don't really mind that much. Like yeah, it's interesting. Really get the it, this happens, it feels like this happens a bit with like people get really hung up on like all the pre-release stuff and stuff leaking and then once something's out you realise how little that truly matters. Mm. Like now that it's out, people just, yeah, people who want to get it have got it and are having a good time with it. Yeah. You know, it's like all that stuff uh, really does fade into the background pretty quickly. Not mm. that it necessarily should though. Like, people have really easily put the Pokemon that they've cut into the game just by using the 3DS models, which is what a lot of these ones are. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. That what, sorry? So, a lot of the Pokemon that are still in this yep. from the older games are just the models from the 3DS. They've just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people have easily modded this game. Oh, they've modded it, right. To okay. put, the, you know, the missing Pokemon in. Right. So, I don't know. I, 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 I don't... I, like, it, it is selling incredibly well mm. and all that sort of shit, but I don't think people are necessarily over it or whatever, I, I, and neither should they necessarily be. I do think it's... I, no, I'm, I'm just talking more about, like, I guess from from where we sit when, you know, we're, we're reading about, like, the news of it and talking about it on this thing, and it seems like it's this big thing that could potentially sink the game because people like to be very dramatic when they talk oh, about this stuff. Oh, it's not even anything when to they're do upset. with sinking but then the game, though. Once it's out, you just go... You know, you realise that the people that are getting most up in arms about it and then the game buying public are two completely different things. Sure. Sh- yeah. Sure. But people that, at large. It's, it's always a noisy minority in the in these cases, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I guess it's whether you define the success, the success of this to be in how it sells, which obviously is, is a metric for it, or in like, if you can say, this is kind of shitty about it and the development yeah. of it is kind of, has some shitty practices to it, that's still part of it i'm gonna sneeze so continue well i guess also too like then yeah the reviews start dropping and it's mostly <laughs> mostly positive told you yeah <laughs> bless you <laughs> fuck up <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway yeah what are you thinking of it so far i I've, really like it a lot yeah it's really charmingly designed and made like all of the maps the interfaces the music is great it's a classic pokemon game there's not a lot going on with the story yeah, it's, I think that yeah. we we were all a bit like miffed when it was revealed that we you know we kind of thought oh maybe they'll do a big you know this could potentially there could be a bit of a shift coming mm-hmm. and uh, you know seeing it come along uh, along the line and all the stuff they were showing of it it's like oh no they're really playing it safe with this one and it it yeah it really does stick to the formula yes but I think it is just about the best example you could have of a Pokemon. You know, yeah. it's doing it very well. That's the it's thing, not shaking yeah. it up, but at least it is putting it in the nicest possible package that you can have it in. I think it's the best Pokemon game that I've played. It's, yeah. It looks great. Like, that core gameplay thing hasn't changed for 20 years, but it doesn't have to. It's a turn-based JRPG, and they've just nailed it. And, uh, well, yeah, and the other thing is, I mean, the big change f- f- in it from previous Pokemon games is is something that they've taken from Let's Go Pikachu right. last year, which is the no wild, no random battles in the wild. You yep. can see the Pokemon moving around the map, so you can make the decision to be like, oh, cool, there's one I don't have yet. Mm-hmm. I'll go over there. Um, which it's kind of almost a shame that, you know, that, that they had put that into Let's Go first because, because it's just like, oh, yeah, they're reusing that thing they did in that. So they're yeah. kind of not getting the credit for... That being that is a that is a shake up. Like, I honestly d- forgot that. I mean, like obviously, I knew that it wasn't a, a thing in all the preceding ones. But yeah, you're right. I kind of just took it for granted almost. Yeah, and it does work really, really well. Like it, I, I reckon, it, it makes it so much better. There's there's other like when Final Fantasy started doing that as well. Like other franchises like this mm. took away random battles. Yeah. It is a big improvement. That used to be my least favourite part of this type of game. Yeah. It's kind of wandering around, then just all of a sudden, da! Yeah. You're in a bat. And like, <laughs> and also like fighting the same kind of uh, enemy again and again and again and again and again. That's the There main is a lot of thing, variety yeah. in this one very early on. I, I think I'm enjoying the collectathon catch them all aspect of this 
more than any previous Pokemon game because I know what I've got and I know which one that is. Yep. And I can avoid them or not. Now, yep. what if I were to tell you that you weren't going to be able to catch them all? I mean, I can catch them all that are in the game. What if I told you they weren't all in the game? Well, what do you mean they aren't all in the game? The ones that in, are in the game are all in it. I'm going to send you a forum link really soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, but like, even, uh, even 400 that, is too many. Already. Yeah. Oh. Even that, once I'm in the game, it's like, yeah, I don't really care about what's not here. Mm. And I, that's not to say that no one should care. And I know that that does matter really deeply to some people. But it's like, once you turn the game on and you're just playing it, it's... it's I don't know. Mm. I I'm I agree with you. Like, there's, yeah, there's a lot in there. Like, yeah. There's, and also, I'd kind of much rather just have a a, a ho- I've got a whole bunch of new ones to find yes. that I've never seen before. Yeah. That's what's exciting. I don't know why, but I was out on like every generation of Pokemon after the first, and I just thought all the designs, the new design, the quote unquote new designs, because like the first ones were new when they were mm. new. Were dumb. I just was like, oh, why? How can I care about any of these? They're not Charmander. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And now I'm just like, hey, cool. They're all new. They yep. look great. Like it's a really well designed game. The graphics are, you know, they're not uh, incredibly sharp, but mm. that's a cute style. I, I mean, yeah, the, it. the art direction's good. I like the color palettes in the town yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would have really liked to see them shake up is that the battles, like aesthetically in spite of being, you know, obviously like more powerful graphics, mm. they do still look so similar in how they play out to how they did on the Game Boy game. Mm. So like, you know, you do tackle and it's like your guy just moves slightly. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy on the other side of the screen just gets bumped. It's like in 2019, I think it's it's probably, I think fair to think that that is a bit weak. It's like, give us some actual animations of them mm. interacting and actually touching each other, you know, actually looking like they're fighting yeah. instead of this, like, hands-off, like, you know, simulated. That 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 is the bit that kind of... To, that's probably the bit to me that feels like the, is showing its age the most. That is not something i have even thought about right i guess i just don't mind yeah there are there are if you had to justify it there is a lot about the game in terms of sort of interfaces and stuff mm. that uh are specifically or deliberately throwbacks there's a lot yes. of icons of the 16 bit yeah there's a lot of sound effects obviously that's another thing that they've kept over from the let's go game yes the like game boy-esque yeah uh sound effects which i know it's in uh, was it Dragon Quest Eleven? A lot of icons, yeah, specifically old school. Yeah, the music in some of the releases was old style as well. Yep, it's uh, it's becoming a bit of a thing. I don't know if I like it or dislike it. It is certainly becoming a bit of a trope, though. It it depends how it's used. I think it works in this because you have when you go into like your Pokedex, mm. uh, and it'll be like a little sixteen bit sprite of the Pokemon. I think it kind of works aesthetically for that as a design choice because you can go, you've opened this machine sure, and it kind of like, yeah. it makes sense within the context of the world. Like you would have this little dinky machine that would, you yeah. know, you're like looking, your Pokedex is like a little game, but like it kind of works mm. in that sense. But I do see, I, I get what you're saying. Like you can see it very easily being a thing that is all of a sudden just like, yeah, without, without really a good need for it or whatever yes. in everything. I guess it's the same as like Madden and stuff like that where, there's going to be a set of people who are happy to have a good iteration of the thing that they like. Mm. And there's a set of people for whom the iterative nature of it in itself is enough to turn them away from it. Yeah. Go like, Hey, make this something new and different. Yeah. The same thing again. It does seem like they quite lazily rest on their laurels with this series sometimes. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you got a couple of artists scribbling out 150 of them every other year Mm -hmm. or whatever. And not that that's easy work, you know. It, it's hard to draw Pokemon, probably. Mm-hmm. Lord knows I had to trace them back in the day. Yes. <laughs> but it's not exciting. It's That's it's, part of yeah. the reason I didn't get around to play. I was playing another game is why. But mm. I, there's just... There's not, there's not a hook unless you're already hooked. So, yeah, I, the, I mentioned before, like, the combat is, like, I think, great. Right. But it's... Very, very old-fashioned. Yeah. The, and I guess they haven't attempted anything new with it. There are franchises that started as turn-based and became real-time action games, mm. and this is not one of them. Mm. Um, now, is that good because it's great combat or and it's, you know, it's familiar and it's a tried-and-true staple of the series, or is it is it 
cowardly to not be risking or boring well, because new. if, if yeah. you played like sun and moon or whichever one it was right but yeah. before that had checked out for ages yep. so like if you really like this series maybe you've played that every year for yeah. 20 years yeah and a- want more out of it you know and it is then at that point like well why do you keep playing them but it's hard to yeah. know where it comes from with them as a company like whether it is like laziness or whatever but like i don't think you can underestimate the fact that like it's one of the biggest franchises in the world not just of a video game but sure. of a cross-platform thing yeah so the stakes are so high for them so i can kind of understand them being very cautious about like we can't risk it we can't right. rock the boat with this as, as much as like uh, we would have talked about it on the show before this got revealed like hey imagine like breath of the wild but with pokemon imagine yeah. if they yeah. just really changed up the game how exciting and great they could be and then i think after they announced this i kind of just realized i just don't think that's ever going to happen right. i just don't think they're ever going to be in a position where they feel like they can afford to take that kind of risk, that kind of artistic leap mm. with something that is just such a massive like commercial thing for them. Just yes. such a one change of leadership position away from happening though. Because like yeah, look at stuff sure. that is kind of a weird risk, like Detective Pikachu and whatever. Yeah. That's not them them, but you know what I mean? Like people are okay with weird shit happening mm. and would be with this. Like you can keep the core of what the game actually is, which is fight and collect Pokemon. Yeah, true. It doesn't really matter the specifics of how that happens. Mm -hmm. I don't think people are necessarily there for that particular type of combat. Right. As long as it's measure up these Pokemon's attacks against each other or whatever, it Mm -hmm. probably can change and probably should at this point because, yeah, like I said, I still haven't played it, but if it's the same thing, it I I and I want to do that again. I am interested in playing this. It's a good version of it. Yeah. yeah. But so here's but my it's hollow in some way. You here's know what I mean? my CEO hat. My CEO hat is on, and okay. here is my explanation of why the combat hat. hasn't changed. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we six year olds have to be able to play this game. Sure. It's yeah, a, a child can play turn based combat. You are the child enjoyment officer. <laughs> You're wearing the hat. So <laughs> now let's be clear on what that role entails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to p- pass you on to my boss, <laughs> Prince Andrew, <laughs> and he's going to explain. <laughs> I'm physically incapable of playing Pokemon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I but really that, let the side <laughs> down, which is Pikachu, Charmander. Uh, I've got a magic cup and I'm trying to raise the level up in there. <laughs> That's my explanation. It's that is one of the few ways you can guarantee a child can play Pokemon. It's keeping kids that can combat. do more stuff than just that type of combat, though. Maybe they could change, like they could, or have the same combat, but in a different. You're right. I These think are games for kids. Yeah, and it's the same argument at some point that I'm sort of making of like, why isn't this different and growing with me and evolving? Same reason Star Wars isn't for me anymore because it's but, for kids. And then yeah. we've been, um, we've been, we've been uh, um, spoiled. Right. With Zelda. Because yes. they did it and it's the best game maybe ever. Yeah. And, you know, some franchises do do that. They, for whatever reason, feel that it's important to the fr- – I think Mario is another good example. Like, sure. it's Like, it's, those games started out as these very, like, innovative games that kind of changed the course of mm. things. And so it's so in the DNA of those franchises to be evolving and kind of leading the way. Yeah. You know, some – and in all forms of art. Some people do that. Some people lead the way. Other things are just like, no, we're just here doing our thing. And, we, sure. you know, pe- because also that's what people like about the franchise of Pokemon is that they battle and they collect these monsters. People aren't like, you know what's great about getting a new Pokemon game is that it absolutely reinvents the wheel. Right. Like, I think they just know that that's not a thing that people have ever turned to that franchise for. And they also probably are very aware that I think that would be a franchise where perhaps more than any other the sheer volume of people for whom each new game is their first time playing that. Yeah. So there's a lot of diehards, yeah. but there would be new, so many new people coming to it because it is such a big like cultural phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Kids that, who were born on the day the first Pokemon game came out would have kids who were playing this now. Right. right. That's the yeah. amount of time that's yeah. passed. Totally. That's fucking so, wild. <laughs> it's insane. So just them going like, yeah, we just put a fancy coat of paint 
on the old skeleton. Mm. It's timeless. People still like it. People are still drawn to it. There's still something about it. We're just kind of re-upping for every like new group of people that have come along that have never played one before. We've got to make it look shiny so it appeals to their modern sensibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and also for people who've been around a long time, hey, there's you know 150 of these new things to yeah. find a new little challenge and it works the way that you expect it to work. And I have found that very comforting. Like this week, having been very busy working on a lot of stuff, just being able to like pick it up and just know exactly what I'm in for. Yes. I just found that very comforting. It's like... Yes, th- this story in in, in very loose <laughs> sense of the term is yeah. horseshit. Like I will say the very the very beginning of it, God, it's a slog. Yes, like it just is. very stop starty. Like yeah. oh, now go back and tell your mum that you're going off to the <laughs> new yeah. town. It's yes. like Here's fuck the professor. Yeah. 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 yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah. I was just like, just I just want to get this out of the way so I can start playing it to actually talk about the mechanics of it on the pod. Yeah. But then you're at, like being in the wild area is cool. It's like cool. that's yeah. the big shake up thing that they've they've sort of said. Hey, this is the big new thing. There's one area where you can move the camera around. <laughs> but even that, the way the towns are designed, once you're in those towns, they they're designed in such a way that it doesn't matter that you can't move the camera. No, around. no, I've not had you an just issue walk with that up the street all. and yeah. then you're in the shop. Because there's nothing in them, right? Yeah. So yes, basically I, this the second town you go to, they they clone and mirror like the two shops. Basically, weird. So it's like you could have maybe put a bit more effort into detailing the static towns that there are there, of which there's I don't know, like seven or eight or something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you think yeah. of this as Nintendo's FIFA, sure. Yeah, every year sure. they're putting out a new one. Like, of course, soccer is the same. <laughs> yeah, sure. But you know, we've made some parts of it worse. See you next year. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But um, yeah. but yeah, I like the new designs. Mm-hmm. I like the world. I like the I like the fucking absolutely crowbar in British dialogue. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. Rough, <laughs> rough stuff. I mean, there are a couple of things. It's weird that when when there's like quote unquote cutscenes and people talk, there's just there's just text and then nothing. Yes. Not that I expect voice acting, but not either not even a ba 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 like it's weird that there's just so, that kind of sticks out to me as a little like because the UI is all great. The presentation yes. of like the little, yeah, the menus, the mm-hmm. little sound effects within menus, all that is so cohesive and, it is. and believable. And your little Pokedex jumping up on the screen when you catch a new one and it being filled out, like, is just, again, it's like, I think I said this when the Let's Go games came out, playing them on the Game Boy and having to do so much, like, in the your head of, like, yeah. yeah, fleshing it out. And that being in, you know, knowing that there'd one day be a day where it's just there on the screen for you in like, you know, cr- like clear, like mm. looking as realistic as it can be for yeah. that world is sick. Yeah. It really scratches that itch of like, you know, thinking back to yourself as a 12 year old, like, yeah, this is fucking cool. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely think this is the best Pokemon game that I've played. It's just, it's. You're right, the logical evolution of what it is. Yeah. You know another world I wanted to explore as a kid? Yes. The world beyond the stars in when, a galaxy. When, when would that have been? Not recently. Oh, yeah. Would in have the been future? A, other direction, mate. Oh, a sideways. A long time ago. <laughs> and do you know where? Mm, nearby? Down, down the shops? No. <laughs> couldn't be further. Where th- oh, where Dad's gone? <laughs> <laughs> so it's in another galaxy. <laughs> So where dad's not dad's a near, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not even a nearby galaxy and not even a far away galaxy. Okay. It's far, far away. Okay. It's so weird that that's the very opening of those movies and people are like, it's weird that George Lucas can't write better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, people don't realise that those are for fucking kids as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, just be careful. Those are for kids. <laughs> Watch your language. Sorry, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> that's not just... Yeah, that's not just setting the scene. That's a mission statement of yeah. the yes. quality of the writing. Yes. <laughs> In this essay, I intend to furthermore prove that... Oh, God, this is going to be a boring fucking... Uh, the definition I've, of man-child is... <laughs> uh, I've been playing... Well, okay, the definition of man-child is... This week I have completed <laughs> yes. the game Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. You've been playing it as well, Ben? Yeah, I've played heaps of it. I've been playing it today. Yep. I've, um, I'm about... 
Well, there's I've got four or five <laughs> planets, and I've had to go to two of them twice. I think. Sure, Just you're quickly. getting towards the end. Right. Then. Fuck. Okay. I love how much of a man of extremes you are, Knox. It's either when we're on this pod, it's either like, man, I've been working a lot this week. I haven't had time to play anything, or it's like I completed three games. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> there's barely ever any weeks where you're like, I don't know, I've played like a couple of hours. It's like no. yeah. I haven't touched it, or I sat up all night and finished this hundred hour game, which Flip I didn't like. <laughs> I don't really like Star Wars Jedi. I know you don't. Yeah. Uh, it's um, yeah. It's like we've talked about it a bit, and like a lot of people have been making the comparisons. It's basically Tomb Raider yeah. with a lightsaber. There are literally tombs yeah, there, in this Star are, Wars yes. game. And Which, you, you do you do some raiding when you're in there? Absolutely, you're not Woo. leaving them alone. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. There were tombs in the the Knights of the Old Republic games, which I guess is their excuse of like this is in universe. We're not just ripping off Tomb Raider. It's all Jedi shit yeah. or like ancient civilization. Shit. Yeah, yeah, but it is the the gameplay style of the modern Tomb Raider game. Pretty much, it's like a little bit. It's not Dark Souls at all. It's like no. third person combat, but it's like behind the back directly, yeah. which is kind of like Dark Souls. But it's third person combat exclusively with your lightsaber. Well, I was talking to friend of the show Wolf J. You know, yeah. all know mm-hmm. Wolf J, and they've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Right. And they made the comparison to that because it is it, similar to it's that. It's much more similar to that. Yeah. It's pretty boilerplate in, action game this in that, whole thing. A, as a melee game, it's not as well made as the Dark Souls games. It no, nowhere near. It's not bad. It's not awful. Um it, there's an okay variety of enemies that you fight. Mm-hmm. There's like a uh a, a decent sort of pace to it. There's a good as you go through the game uh, feeling of getting better and better. Yes. At it. They start throwing more and more stormtroopers and shit at you and yep. you're really able to slice them all down like a fast, good Jedi. Yes. Um, yeah. That build up of powers, it's, it's actually quite slow. Yeah. Like you really only start the off with long. like one. It, yeah. I reckon I did like most of the exploration of the planet. So let's go back from the start. Yes. Uh, it's... A long yeah. time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Third person action game. You're going through. People have compared it to like Metroid and shit. It's nothing like that. Again, nah. it's Tomb Raider yeah. where there's these sort of open, smallish areas that there's little bullshit crates to find in. Yep. And you're going through on like a medium story, medium low story. I'd say blow, really. Like even for yeah. for Star Wars, it's pretty... It's I don't like the protagonist. Right. He's... Uh, just bland and uninteresting. Let's play. See if you can remember bullshit Star Wars name. Oh, um, Cal Kestis. You've nailed it. Yeah. You've got Cal Kestis. I almost right. said Cal Cresto. He's the one. But more fun. The rest of them, no chance. No, absolutely not. No. It, but there's so many characters you meet with names like it's Bliggs Morgan. <laughs> yeah. You, well, not Morgan. <laughs> That's just a regular name. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Morgo. Captain Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Bliggs Morgo <laughs> and Griff Bansai. Yeah. <laughs> It's um, Spliss Mork. <laughs> I hate Star Wars Robin names. Robin Williams. And <laughs> I fucking really don't like Star Wars names They're for so some dumb. reason. They're really, really dumb. Um, I'm Megus Graft. Yes, uh, that's a sick you've one. You've got Grease something. He's yeah. your captain. And you- like... Oh, I don't remember the other w- the woman. Wacky band of characters on your ship. You go from planet to planet. Which I I think him specifically the the cap the pilot guy. Yeah. Shit. He's like Rocket Raccoon, but with no personality. Oh, I like him. He's, I don't. He's I've, like an old gambler man. To me, he is symbolizes what's bad about this game of right. like we recognize what uh, entertaining character is, and we don't quite know how to write that. So we'll just do a facsimile of it and hope people just get by on the tropes. Mm -hmm. And the design of the character is a lot better than the character itself. And it looks like Mm. they worked backwards from the drawing, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But the the story within the last sort of two, three hours gets better. Right. It it wraps up well. Right, okay. I think. Still, you know, Star Wars level well. Yeah, yeah. But it's enjoyable enough to throw yourself into. I do like the fact that, like, the gameplay is very Tomb Raider-y means the story gets out of the way for a lot of it. Yeah. Honestly, it's just like a, a cutscene and then you're at a planet and it's a big, relatively big, crisscrossing series of pathways and, and climbing things. It's a lot of it Uncharted-style climbing mm-hmm. and uh, the controls for fucking swinging on the ropes... It's killing me. Right. I find a lot of the controls really imprecise. That's interesting. I, I haven't really found that. But and we're playing on different consoles. Which I don't think makes a big difference with this game. It it shouldn't. Yeah. Like actually, because like you said it was pretty buggy on the Xbox. So 
I and I looked this up. It's it, it seems kind of random whether right. this is happening to people across everything on the PC as well, mm-hmm. or not random, but it's like it's bugs and shit. So it's hard to predict what's going to cause it. Sure. But I was having pretty serious shit, and the whole way through the game. Right. But I'm surprised you say you haven't run into. I've run into a bit now. Okay. I actually had a uh, crash. <laughs> yeah, I had a hard lock right at the end. I had it not <laughs> making that noise. And not oh, wow. initially in a bad spot. I just saved. Yeah. Second time it happened, just. Towards the end of a very long and difficult section, right? That really fucked me off. Yeah, and then I've had a couple more, um, sort of like killing uh, an enemy, and then all the pixels sort of split off, right? And refracted, like so- something's clearly gone wrong. People fly away. the The world doesn't load in if you land on a new planet. Sometimes, especially in cutscenes, or not even just in cutscenes, all over the place, you'll someone will. In cutscenes, it happens, for example, when the camera angle changes, mm-hmm. and there'll be a character just kind of like T-posing, and then they'll go back in, and they'll snap in. Right. And like things jumping in like that, mm-hmm. uh, level of detail stuff, and then in, like in the distance, seeing stormtroopers in the T, and then they snap in. Right. And then the AI is fucking terrible. Yeah. Uh, even when it's working, it's not great. It's just pretty standard. Run at you, take a shot, blah, blah, blah. Often I'll find you'll go into a room and there'll be heaps of enemies. Some of them will fight each other. Yeah. And then you just step outside the doorway and you just wait for them to kill each other. And if you <laughs> step outside that doorway and they've noticed you half the time, they just turn off. Yeah, exactly. They turn yes. off and walk around. Yes. Yeah. They, they, they leave. Um, and even when it's working, yeah, it's just like there's a lot of sections of people shooting at you from high up and you're just fucking waiting for them to like stand there and go like, get out of here, Jedi! Yes. And then they move left and right for a bit and take a shot and you shoot them. It's like real yeah. fucking PS1 shit. Yeah, um, yeah. There's something about it, though, mm. that is Moorish. Absolutely. It's the, it's the same way I feel about the Tomb Raider games, but yeah. with, I think, a more interesting aesthetic. It, it looks great when it's working. Yes, it does. The, it, the Star Wars stuff has done really well and really not over the top. Yeah. Which is crazy for a thing where it's all lightsabers and stormtroopers well, and shit. I was going to say, the scope of some scenes, like you see these, and it's the, you know, some of the best stuff about the movies is these giant ships yeah. contrasted with a person. Yeah. And it's done subtly somehow. It's not done in a shitty way. I think it's because they're not overusing the musical stings. Sure. I, yeah. It, most of it is its own original score and you get the occasional like little force theme and whatever. Yeah. But a lot of it is original music for I, this game. And I like it. Yeah. It's there's good. Some, some actual songs as well. There's one. There's actually like a bit that he calls out. Yeah. Like oh, I recognize this song. Yeah. And it's a good song. It's a it's an interesting way to start the game as well. All those like Star Wars holograms. Yep. Look nice. Yep. The character designs are good. The new enemy type that they've made for this game mm-hmm. looks really good. Yeah. I think they're new for this. Those purge troopers. They might exist. In comics or something. Or in like the Force Unleashed, maybe. Because the story is kind of, you're like this, you were a Jedi, they got purged by the Empire when it like started. Yeah, this is after episode three. In between three and four, and right? Before four, yeah. Um, so after the prequels, before the originals. Yeah. You're like hiding out, you get embroiled in a, you know, you get, hey, we got to bring the Jedi back, but yeah. there's like Jedi hunters after you yeah. and you try to get a Jedi bullshit thing <laughs> that is the reason for going to all these planets. Yeah, a, a Force MacGuffin. Exactly. Um, but it's nice. It's they the little bits of Star Warsy shit they do use. Mm. And there, you know, there's some stuff from the movies that will show up in some capacity. Either as a wink or a full-on punch in the face occasionally. <laughs> the character from a recent film that plays a large role in one of the sections. There's... In one of the other... Pr- pr- like side movies, yeah. That well is not. I don't like. There's. Mm, I'm not sure which bit you're talking about. Okay. Because let. Uh, no, we can't spoil this. It's just come out. Yeah. But D- there's a there's character stuff. on Kashyyyk, and he's a uh, he's a he's a guerrilla fighter. Sure. Right. And I don't like that character. I didn't like him in the movie that he was in. Oh well, he was in the trailers and shit. Forrest Whitaker is oh, in this okay. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. was in the trailers. He's on. He's in the Forest Planet. Yeah. His name is Forrest Whitaker, and that's good. He should have been on Whitakarius. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't like that. I didn't like his him in this game. Sure, I I didn't really even notice it because I'd forgotten that he was in Rogue One. I think right. it was right. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't even really notice him in that as well. I'll be. I'll tell you the truth. Mm. At the end of this, when I saw the credits, I was like, "Oh, Forrest Whitaker." 
Oh, he was in that other Star Wars movie, right? Weird that they got him to play two characters. <laughs> so I truly didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, fuck. There's there's some other stuff as well peppered throughout. Right, But yeah. it's a fucking Star Wars game. Of course there's going to be that. Yeah, yeah. It, it has really good ideas yes. deep down. And I think that's what drove me through it. That like the exploration, the level design is sometimes good. Yes. And sometimes it's very like, you need the double jump to be able to get through here or whatever. I, I got lost a fair, I'm getting lost a fair bit. Right. Like checking the hollow map, just like, which where isn't the fuck, good. where have I been? No, it's, a, it's the worst way to, it's like, it's confusing. And there are sections where that bugged out on me too, because your Ugh. droid, who I love, BD1 is yeah. really, really good. Yes. Um, just like better a little, than BB eight. Yes, mm. like just the, like a little dog droid. They've made a little puppy. Yes. Um, yeah, the the general story and vibe of it, I'm actually kind of I liked. Right. Uh, by the end of it, the stuff they'd set up had paid off. Yeah. Okay. Because um, there's some betrayals and some why didn't you tell me this and stuff yeah. like that, and which it, is the most interesting aspect of it. And it I, gets there at the end. Right, okay. I yeah. think part of the problem with the story is, like you say, it's out of the way for most of it, and it's like a 20-ish hour game maybe mm. if you're doing sort of everything along the way and taking your time, and it's like a movie-length story. Yeah, yeah. So it definitely... If that, really. It's like a 60 minute or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... But as a side thing, I enjoyed the the Star Wars ness of it, which mm. sometimes puts me off of things. Yeah, I didn't really like the combat, but it's cool what they're going for. Yeah, it's almost there. It it the rewards almost there. It rewards your patience. Yeah, like a, I think that's why the people are comparing it to something like a Dark Souls and or it's a Bloodborne. Parrying and all, you know, yeah. you're doing the same sort of shit. But it's. It's, uh, sometimes it feels like I haven't fucked up and yet I've been killed. Sure. And it's it's not far enough in either direction. It's not like um, smooth enough that you're just flowing through it and yeah. it's not like hard enough that it's satisfying or whatever. It's not deliberate enough that it satisfies maybe y a better word. Y yes. It's in a dumb middle ground that doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite look good because it keeps failing in graphical ways all the time. But like stuff like will load in on the sides in like white Oh yeah, yeah. All that sort a of shit. A lot of texture popping. Hate but, that. But then, in terms of the direction, the shots and yeah. the compositions are very nice. It's mainly polished stuff, I think. I completely agree. Yeah, there's it's the bugs, it's the texture things, and it's apparently the the controls are a little weird. Right. Like there's, you, sometimes you can't do multiple inputs, so you can't guard and switch to a attacking, or you can't guard and do a force power. Right. Or you can, but you have to do it in this like millisecond between animations sure so it's maybe getting coming trying to come to grips with that but then i've almost finished the game so yeah yes yeah and i would love to see a sequel to this yeah it I would really like, feels yeah. like they've they've you know rushed it out because obviously there's the movie soon and there's mm. the mandalorian and shit people talking about star wars they needed yes. it out it wasn't finished it doesn't feel like mm -hmm. but there's some ideas there and a general core of it that could be really cool yeah. If they properly did it. I agree. Uh, with the same protagonist, would you want? Um, Why not? I don't mind the protagonist at all. He's not bothered me. I'd, I think it would be, it easily would make me go from thinking this is a good game to a great game if the protagonist had anything interesting about him. Sure. Again, towards the end is where this sort of stuff happens a little bit more. Right. Which, in terms of pacing for a game this long, is poor. It's, I mean, I'm he's not pretty even, standard video game, yeah. like, you know, quippy guy. I, I, I think I don't even mean like depth. I mean superficially. Yeah. Just make it more of a Nathan Drake guy, or or something that I haven't seen before. Yeah, I like that you can do the customization and stuff. I love your the customization and, and yeah. your ship and everything. Yeah, that's very cool. And those are the fun unlockables. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not that fun. There's a million little fucking crates around. But I have, find them. I have found that fun. <laughs> I sure. do like that. I th there's something. It's it's addictive or something mm. but i don't know if it's fun i've kept doing it but every time i've been like it's felt a little bit like a chore to go get them which is how the tomb raider games always felt to me too right and i don't know why i'm doing it but i really want to do it is I that can, fun i can no longer distinguish between <laughs> uh, an addictive moorish video game and a fun one yeah it's um, hard to <laughs> but it's also like i like pretending that i'm a jedi and jumping around and beating shit up like it's that is fun turning on a lightsaber cool. is fucking cool that's it pressing a button and having to go <laughs> yeah, is a, just a satisfying thing to do. Yeah, um, so but it's just a bit broken and unpolished. Where it's yeah. like, 
it's not easy to recommend like right now. I was going to say like this is a game like I haven't completed a lot of games this year. Right. I haven't played a lot of games as much as I've played this game. But I wouldn't be having it in my top 5 of the year. No. Which is it, it when it's when it's cheaper and it's been patched a bit, go for it if you like Star Wars. Yeah. No rush right now though. It'll yeah. still be there and it'll still be the same type of game. It'll still be just as satisfying then as it is now like it's an well, okay possibly game. more if yeah. they drop a, a, a genuinely good patch in sure. a month or two it could we most of these issues would be solved but the main thing is is just kind of how it, it feels like the first one of an idea that they haven't fully mm. utilized yet like uncharted one versus uncharted two sort of thing right, right yeah. i would love to see this go further and get better mm. but right now it's like it's okay yeah yeah i think i agree with it's that it's fine Cool. Well, I guess we'd better leave it there for another week on yep. Filthy Casuals. Uh, let's do – maybe next week we can check in on um, – just to get, like we were saying, we were going to check in on Death Stranding and see where we're all at and have a yeah. review in progress of that. Yes. Um, but for now, yeah, let's uh, let's call it for another week. Mm-hmm. Filthycasuals.com.au is where you can find uh, links to all our stuff, including our premium band camp episodes that we do. Uh, you can also support the show on Patreon and get a bonus episode every week from us. Um, yeah, thanks very much for listening. We'll see you next time. And as we say here at the end of every episode of Filthy Casuals. That was a lightsaber turning off. Oh. It was perfect as well, which is why you looked confused. <laughs> <laughs>